An independent autopsy released by the family of the Charlotte man killed by police confirms that Keith Lamont Scott died from gunshot wounds in the back and the abdomen. Officers fired at 43-year-old Scott last month. He was sitting in his car waiting for his son to arrive home from school. Police say he was armed with a gun. His family says he was not. The shooting was captured on video by police and Scott's wife. We sat down with Rakia Scott to hear for the first time what she remembers about that day. It's an interview that you'll see only on CBS This Morning. So when did you know that there was a problem? When did you know this is a bad situation? When I came out the door and two officers were pointing their gun at my husband in the car. What is your husband doing at this point? You see the He's police? He's just sitting in the car. He's just sitting there looking forward. He's confused. I know he was. He, he just taking his medicine. We hear you come to the scene. Keith, don't do it. And you're saying, Keith, Keith don't, don't do, it. do it. Don't you do it. Keith, Keith, don't do it. What are you telling him not to do? I'm not talking to Keith. I'm, talk I'm calling Keith's name mm -hmm. for him to hear me. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to the officers. Don't do it. That I actually see changing their stands, their positions. Did they know who you were? No, not like. I'm sure in the heat of the moment, the they're trying the to figure out who, who is this woman who is standing here. No, they wouldn't have known me personally, mm -hmm. but I was the only one out there. I'm yelling at them. I'm loud enough for them to hear me. Keith! Keith! No, I won't say that they know that I was, knew that I was his wife, but I was somebody of importance. The police report says that they encountered your husband, that he was in the car, that they saw marijuana, and that they saw a gun. What did you see? No gun. You didn't see any gun? No gun. And let's, let's assume he had the marijuana and that he had the gun. At the moment of the shooting is what I think people are focusing on. And to that, you say what? He had no gun. He was not a threat. And, and, and he just, he was just not a threat, period. He didn't have a gun. He didn't have, he wasn't a threat. What is your purpose? What, what was your reasoning? Why, it, you saw him backing up. Why didn't you just say, give him a command then? The police also say that the videotape is inconclusive. But I was there. I saw this incident unfold before my face. What people don't seem to understand, they're trying to bring in our past. But prior to, I mean, after November the 2nd, after this accident, after his motorcycle accident, and when he returned home in January, he was a totally different person. Let's talk about that for a second, because there's been a lot of publicity about the fact that you had taken out a restraining order against him. That's correct. That he had pulled a gun on you, that there had been violence in the marriage. And to that, you say what? All of it is correct. Absolutely. But that's my marriage. I don't expect anyone to understand our marriage. Does that have anything to do with this case? Had they known him, then I would understand why they would be in, you know, in defense mode. They didn't know who my husband was. They didn't know nothing about him. I heard you say he has TBI, traumatic brain inju injury. He's just taken his medication. He has a TBI. He's not going to do anything to you guys. He just took his medicine. He takes almost 11 different medications. He take them, and you have to give it time to kick in. If not, He's not going to, if you start a conversation with him, he's not going to remember the conversation once the medicine is kicked in. Don't you do it! You go shoot him! What role do you think race played in the shooting of your husband? 100%. But people will say, but Officer Vincent is black and your husband is black. Officer Vincent, I don't believe shot my husband. What do you mean you don't believe that he shot your husband? Because of the positioning when the shooting actually occurred. Officer Vincent was to my left further. My positioning was where I could see the officer with the white shirt, my husband, the police, the officer with the dash cam, and the officer right here with the With the red, red. shirt. Mm -hmm. You did not see Officer Vincent at that time, or did you? No, no, I did see him, but he's at a at a distance. He's not a part of the interaction. I see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to you, it doesn't make sense that Officer Vincent was the one that pulled the trigger? Correct. Well, what does the Charlotte Police Department have to gain by saying it was a black officer who shot your husband? I'm not sure what they have to gain. I'm just going by what I believe. recall and believe that day. And how are your children? 
How is your family? All we want is to know why. Why? Just why? why? Why did you have to take Keith that day? Give us your reason, you, the, the real valid reason as to why my husband was, my husband's life was taken that day before me. Now, there are seven children, guys, that range in age. They've been together for 25 years. There are seven children that range in age from 9 to 23. And she said, you know, they're taking it day by day. But the officer that she's talking about, his name is Brentley Benson, was identified by the police as the officer who shot Keith Scott. He is on administrative leave, and Rakia Scott's attorney says, told us that ballistics tests could clear all this up, but no test results have been released. And that's why they did the independent autopsy, because they've gotten no information about the autopsy, no information about ballistics. This whole encounter from beginning to end lasted three minutes. Police had gone there to execute a warrant on someone else. They weren't even, had any, nothing to do with Keith Lamont Scott. They saw him, and then they engaged in an encounter with him. But she said so, beginning to end was three minutes. So how did the police answer her question? Why? Well, she said no one has given her an answer, Charlie, because no one has talked to her to this day. No one has said we're sorry. No one has had a conversation with her about what happened that day. Right. So she's, a you know, she's tragedy. in a lot of pain. And... You know, you could feel her pain. You could feel her anger. She really held it together. As soon as the interview was over, she burst into tears. She said, I just wanted to get through this because I want people to hear me. I don't want people to see I'm in a lot of pain and that I'm very angry and that they don't hear the story that I'm trying to tell today. It's terrible, terrible. So was there a gun or was there not a gun? The police say that there was a gun. The family still says there was not a gun. But the police say, yes, there was a gun. Well, you could see the fear in her voice almost anticipating. Yes, yes, you could. Yeah. You could. That's why she pulled out her phone. She said, that's what you have to do these days.